Here's problem 23.8. If A is equal to 3 millimeters and B is equal to 4 millimeters, Q1 is equal to 60 nanocoulombs, and that's going to be a positive charge. Let's use red for that. Q2 is equal to 80 nanocoulombs. That's also going to be a positive charge. 80 nanocoulombs here. 60 nanocoulombs over here. And little q is 24 nanocoulombs, also a positive charge. What is the magnitude of the total electric force on little q? Well, since all these charges are positive, all their forces are going to be repulsive, and they're going to be along their lines of action. So there's a line of action between q1 and little q along this diagonal here that will cause a repulsive force in this direction. Let's call that F1. And then there will be a another force along the line of action between Q2 and little q, and that will also be a repulsive force. And let's call it F2. We wish to find the net force of these two added together vectorially. Let's find the magnitude of these two forces first. So we have F1. It's between Q1 and little q. Now we can see from our triangle we have from A and B three and four millimeters respectively, that the hypotenuse of this triangle is going to be five millimeters. So that will be the distance between these two charges. So F1 is going to equal K Q1 little q over the distance between them squared, nine times ten to the nine times sixty nanocoulombs, sixty times ten to the minus nine, times 24 nanocoulombs, 24 times 10 to the minus 9, over 5 millimeters, 5 times 10 to the minus 3, and that distance squared. We have a 10 to 9 and 10 to the minus 9 to cancel out here, at least one of them. So I have 9 times 60 times 24 times 10 to the minus 9, divided by 5 times 10 minus 3, all that squared, and I get 0 0.518 newtons. Let's look at F2. F2 is equal to KQ2, little q, over the distance between them squared, 9 times 10 to the 9, times Q2, which is 80 nanocoulombs, and 24 nanocoulombs, 24 times 10 minus 9, over the distance between those two charges, which is B, 4 millimeters, 4 times 10 minus 3, that quantity is squared. <clears throat> so we have 9 times 10 to 9 times 80 times 10 to the minus 9 times 24 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 4 times 10 to the minus 3, that's squared. I get 1.08 newtons. That force is totally in the positive x direction. So if we wrote these forces as vectors, at least force number 2 would be 1.08i newtons. That's pretty easy. The other force, not so easy. Force 1 is going to be 0.518 cosine theta i minus 0.518 sine theta j, where theta is this angle right here. It's also the same as this angle right here because of the two intersecting straight lines. So we can see that we have a 3-4-5 triangle where 
where the theta we're looking for is right there. So this is going to be 0.518. The cosine of theta will be 4 fifths adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that will take the place of all that. And then 0.518, the sine of theta is going to be 3 fifths. So if we calculate that out, 0.518 times 4 fifths is 0.414. So we have 0.414i minus, and we have 0.518 times 0.6, or 3 fifths, 0.311j newtons. That's our second vector, that is f2. We want to add these two vectors together, so our total force is F1 plus F2 vectorally. And so we have 1.08i plus 0.414i minus 0.311j. F1 plus F2. So this is going to be point 484i minus 0.311j. That's our net force, but we want the magnitude of this force. So we're going to square our components. 1.484 squared plus negative 0.311 squared, and take the square root. So 1.484 squared plus 0.311 squared, the negative will square out. Square root, 1.516, or we'll say 1.52 newtons. So that is the magnitude of the net force on little q due to the other two charges. <laughs>